Hi, this is Mr. Curtis, and today's topic happens to be DNA. And DNA stands for deoxyribonucleic acid, the code of life. Let's talk about where you might have heard of DNA before. And if you've watched any kind of crime shows lately, like CSI, you probably have noticed that they have oftentimes a lot of evidence that deals with DNA. Maybe you've heard of this guy. This is O.J. Simpson, and uh, he was on trial, and I think it was like in 1994, which was quite a while ago for you guys. But his trial was one of the very first where DNA was a big part of the evidence that was used to try to convict him of murder. And O.J. Simpson was a former NFL player who had turned actor and was accused of murdering his wife. And they found his DNA in a blood sample, her DNA in a blood sample, both at the crime scene. But yet he was still found innocent, which uh, is quite an interesting story, actually. Here's another guy. This is another California case. Scott Peterson was convicted of killing his pregnant wife on Christmas Eve. Merry Christmas. Anyway, two very famous cases where DNA was a big part of the trials. What is DNA? It's the instruction booklet for all living things. So it's really quite amazing to think that every living thing, their instruction booklet is DNA. And every living thing uses the same language of DNA, which we'll get into later. It makes you what you are. It gives you all of your physical traits. Not traits that aren't physical, which we'll talk about as well. Um, I want to talk to you about some of these physical traits, such as hair color. And as my mother would say, this is a hair color not found in nature. Yeah, an old rock group, obviously. Uh, this guy. Anyone know who he is? He is a famous rocker. His name is David Bowie, and David Bowie is known for having one blue eye and a brown eye. Now here his iris is dilated for some reason, but he has one blue and one brown, where most of us have inherited the DNA for two of the same eye color, he has two different eye colors. Very interesting. I also want you to think about these things. What about temper? Is that something that you inherit? How about liking to play basketball? Or being a good swimmer? Or being good at math? I oftentimes hear from parents, oh, I was never very good at math, so I don't expect Junior to be very good at math. Hmm, is that really something that's inherited? We'll talk about that. What things have DNA? As I mentioned before, every living thing has DNA. So here, bacteria, they have DNA. Pond scum, everything in that swamp, all has DNA. Now, they don't have the same DNA, but they use DNA as their code for all of their physical traits. Look at this thing. This is a sequoia. Look at this guy standing next to it. Gives you an idea of how big this guy is. Huge, huge tree. Thousands of years old. And here is your favorite seventh grade science teacher. And look what he's got. He's got his truck up on the top of this fallen over sequoia tree. Well, what they had done is they had built a ramp. And you can't see it. It's on the back side. But there's a ramp where you drive around on the back side. And you can drive your vehicle right up on top of this old sequoia. It's pretty neat. Every living thing has DNA, even them. Where have you heard the term digital before? Well, today, almost everything that you buy, some electronic thing is, is digital, whether it's your phone or a camera, CDs, DVDs, it's all digital. Well, what does that mean? We're going to compare digital to analog. And analog is the old way of doing things. Many of you may even still have a record player. I do. Don't use it much, but it's here. 
ask your grandparents about this thing. This thing's hilarious. This is called an 8-track. And I'm not sure how it gets its name. I suppose it has 8 tracks. But you'd have this big plastic box and you'd cram it into your um, your your car, your car's dash, and it would maybe have 16 songs on it, but it was analog and it would wear out. Well, what's the difference between the two? Digital is very precise, it's easily copied, and it doesn't wear out. Whereas analog is not precise, it cannot be easily copied, and it wears out. Anyone who has old VHS tapes knows that those, those things wear out. Or if you make copies of copies of copies of copies, you don't get the exact thing. You know that if you copy your music today, that's all digital. One copy of another copy of another copy sounds all the same. Well, DNA is digital. It's a precise code. It's easily copied, and it doesn't wear out. And uh, unfortunately, pregnant teenagers find out how easily it is to have DNA copied. Where is DNA found in humans? Well, this is a picture of my arm. Yes. OK, no. And let's focus in on a small section of skin. So we've gone from arm down to skin, and now from there to some skin cells. And perhaps you remember what the inside of a cell is called. And let's focus in on that nucleus. And within the nucleus, there are these X-shaped structures, which are chromosomes. Chromosomes are chapters of DNA. You happen to have 23 chapters in every sperm or egg cell. And so you get 23 from mom, 23 from dad, for a total of 46 in every one of your body cells. And every one of your cells, your trillions of cells, has the exact same copy of DNA. We'll get into more of that later on. So we were zooming in here. And over in this corner is a chromosome. And you can see as part of it has become uncoiled. Well, if you think about DNA as kind of like a rubber band, and if you take a rubber band and you twist it and twist it and twist it, it gets all knotted up. That's kind of how a chromosome is. It's a strand of DNA that's just been super knotted up. And now we're unknotting that, and we have this piece of DNA. DNA was discovered in 1957 by Watson and Crick. One guy was an Englishman, one guy an American. That's a long time ago. Looking at the DNA molecule, many people say it looks like a twisted ladder, and it really does. Now here is the untwisted ladder, and what we're now going to focus our attention on are these letters here. The A's, T's, G's, and C's. That is the important part of a DNA molecule, and that's where all the information is stored. It's the sequence of A's, G's, C's, and T's that stores the information. It's those four letters that make up the alphabet for DNA. DNA has four symbols in its alphabet. How many do we have? 26. How many does a computer have? Two. They have zeros and ones. A computer is written in code of nothing more than zeros and ones. When you have uh, a Word document and it says it's 97K, that means 97,000, oops, 97,000 bits of information stored, 97,000 zeros and ones stored. A photograph that has one megabyte, that's one million bits of information stored, all zeros and ones. If we look at three letters in a row, that makes up something called a gene. And a gene is a code for one trait. 
Now there are some genes that are more than three letters long. Um, one that comes to mind is hemoglobin, hundreds of letters long, for example. Hemoglobin is uh, the blood protein that, uses, that your body uses to carry oxygen. Some genes are only three letters long. You have about 30,000 genes in your DNA. And again, every one of your cells has the complete code of 46 chromosomes. What that means is any cell can make any part of your body. Your stomach cells have the code for making another brain. Your cells in your toe can produce a kidney. The code is there. Every cell contains every bit of information. Quite amazing. Now, as you look at these codes, on the opposite side, you'll notice that the A's always match with T's, and the G's and C's always match up. And partly that has to do with the chemicals in there. A's and T's have a double bond that holds them together. G's and T's have a triple bond. So a T could not match up with a C because two of these things don't match up with three of those things. Now, let's look at one slice of DNA here. And let's see what matches to the other side. So let's work through this together. Again, what matches with A, T, C, G, G, C, A, A, and T. So it's just the opposite for every side. Now, what if, what if this were to happen? What if this C right here were replaced with a T? Now, the T is not supposed to be there, but let's just say for the sake of argument that the T ended up there. What might happen? Well, what will happen is a mutation. A mutation is a change in the DNA code. So this could lead to a big problem. Of course, that's a fake picture, but it's still funny. Or it could lead to nothing. It all depends. Take this for example. Let's say that you're reading a book, and one page of the book has one word that's wrong. So maybe it says something like, the boy walked across the street to see his friend, and the word got changed from friend to pal. The boy walked across the street to see his pal. Does it really change the book? No, not at all. But let's say that that one word says, let's say it's a murder mystery, and the butler says, I confess, I killed Lady Ashley. But then in one book it says, I confess, I did not kill Lady Ashley. Does it change the whole book? Absolutely. And something similar to that can happen with your DNA. One little change in the code might not be noticed at all, whereas one code could really change the outcome. The other thing is, these changes you really can't predict when they happen. But let's look at this. What if there was a slow gradual change in the codes of DNA over, let's say, millions of years? Maybe there was one code change in every generation. What would that lead to? Well, it would lead to evolution. Evolution is a slow gradual change in the codes of DNA. So we started the year with evolution, and now we're back to talking about evolution again. So here's the science behind how evolution happens. It's the change in DNA. So when things slowly change in the DNA, that leads to evolution. Now, this is meant to be a joke. Former President Clinton there. DNA replication, which means to make more. Why? Why do we need to make more DNA? Well, every time there's a boo-boo, you need to make more cells. You know, you fall down and skin your knee. You need to make more cells to replace those. More cells means more DNA. How? Well, what happens is the DNA, the ladder will unzip. So here is the ladder here, and you can see that it is starting to unzip. It's coming apart there. 
then what happens is new letters will come in and become attached. So as you can see on this side, there's already some new letters that are forming. And now more new letters will come over on this side. And you'll have a brand new piece of DNA that will eventually come out. So then you'll end up with two equal copies. Here you have the original piece here that's red. And it splits apart. And then the new pieces come in, which are blue. And then you end up with two exact copies when there was one before. Let's look at it a little bit closer. Here's two pieces of DNA that have come apart. And now new codes will come in. And then the ladder on the other side will form. And what you have then is now two pieces that are exactly the same, 1A and 1B. Think of it this way. Think of the letters of DNA as the letters of the alphabet. When you have genes, that's kind of like the words for the language. And when you have a bunch of genes put together, you have sentences, maybe to make a hand. And then uh, chromosomes, well, that's just, eh, that got cut off, sorry. Chromosomes, again, that's like chapters of the language or of the book. OK, so this ends our discussion of DNA. Make sure to fill in the briefs part and also the summary at the bottom. And we'll see you next time.